Hello everyone, it's been a fantastic morning so far. We've now got Russell McCree um, from Public Health Scotland talking to us about training pathways and adopting R across the organisation. Russell, hey everyone. Um, I'll just do it, um, give me a second Russell, sorry. Russell's an analyst for Public Health Scotland. He's He joined as an apprentice and he's developed his experience over the years and he's using his comprehensive experience to assist in the transforming publishing programme establishing infrastructure, best practice, and new tools and processes across the organization. Russell's passionate about good user experience and using new technology to improve outcomes in the quality and efficiency of healthcare. I'll just hand you over. Thank you. Thanks, Janine. Hi, everyone. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen so we can see what it is that I've got here. Um, so hopefully you can all see that now. Um, so yeah, um, as Janine said, I'm Russell McCreff. Um, I joined the organisation just over three years ago as a, as a modern apprentice. Um, I think Ben spoke about that earlier in the week about sort of workforce and, and how that all comes to, to be in, in the organisation. And I've kind of followed that path, went on to become a graduate apprentice. And this was actually the first thing I got to write senior information analyst on. Um, I start that role this month. Um, so over the last few years, done been able to get involved in a lot of different projects. Um, but this particular art training journey has been the most recent one, and um, probably the most impactful across the organisation as well. So some a little bit of information about the organisation itself um, and where we've come from. So we've got around about three hundred and fifty analytical staff. That doesn't include any data management. It's got other technical roles from our IT department and things like that as well. So 350 is, seems like it's a big number for analytical staff, particularly just in Scotland, um, but that's just in PHS. And then we've got so many other roles and things as well. Um, we've got a really embedded system of uh, proprietary software, in particular SPSS. Um, and there's a lot of other tools and software and things that get used in the organization that needed to be updated. Um, but we've got a core group of people who are really driven for innovation and productivity efficiencies and how we do things. And that's where we started to build our capability in R. Now, there's been a few people that have already spoken about things like this and building capability, but we've got a lot, we've had a lot of work and we've been able to achieve quite a lot in quite a short space of time and um, in particular around infrastructure so sort of building um infrastructure around using r studio server pro and lots of different software things and um, we've got support from it and user groups and we're utilizing teams since the wonderful change um over to office 365 teams was rolled out early um, and been able to utilize that for technical queries and, and getting that user base sort of set up um, for support. But training was was another another thing that we had to do to, to build capability. Um, and that's where this sort of revolves around. So early training, we had a core group sort of dedicated people that were really interested and they utilized online materials. They went and found their own sort of path for learning R, they were sort of dedicated and interested in, in learning those skills. Um, sort of embedding that knowledge and skill across the organization, we utilized classroom courses, which was procured from training organizations. Um, and from that, some teams started to develop their own training. So things started to get really spread out um, and we had a lot of different obstacles. So for online materials, expecting people to use them, was issues with specificity. So we weren't getting sort of information about how we used R in our organization. There was issues with quality. So there's a lot of online materials out there, but not all of them use our style guide. They have varying levels of quality in terms of delivery and actual content and the code that's written. Um, classroom courses in particular, not very cost effective sometimes. Um, and the availability of those wasn't matching up. So sometimes we didn't have courses available for people to book onto. Um, and when courses became available, people would book onto them, but then they weren't able to embed that learning through projects and actually starting to write our codes um, in their workplace at the right time. So they would go on these courses, pick up some new skills and that knowledge decay would sort of tail off before they were able to actually start embedding it. 
So from that, um, I was able to implement a training review. And this is where we started to build on what, what we knew from before and started to build up our training. So reviewed what we had from before, the, the knowledge and the skills that we had to, to get across the organization, what our objectives were, and taking the positive aspects from all the different courses. So the online courses, we had some really positive aspects from those, um, that sort of variability um, of different sort of learning styles using videos and some text and sort of interactive code ch chunks and things like that. Um, and then refining what we already had, defining a learning pathway um, and adding in specific organizational systems and processes. So we have the uh, our server studio pro and um, we've been able to speak about that rather than just sort of a generic this is what our code is and this is how you do it sort of using our style guide and having those fundamentals included throughout the training um, and then for the release and um, we set up training schedules um, with a group of colleagues who are really interested in R and are really capable in it as well. This included things like pre-course checklists. So we had to make sure that people were ready. They had R installed on their machine, that they could get access to the server, that they had they had everything in place ready for, for the course. Um, we also implemented a project so that people were able to implement the, the new skills straight away. And we had post course post course drop in, so people were coming back, being able to speak to to the trainer um, and explain what they'd done with the project, if they'd been able to implement anything in their team, whether it was information requests or some other project that they were able to start sort of expanding their skill base um, and actually speak back and ask any questions that they had, so that they had that opportunity and they weren't having to go and find someone or find an answer for themselves that they knew that they had that coming up. And this is what the introductory R course looked like. So it covers everything from the foundation. So it's really important that people have that fundamental knowledge of R, but also in a sort of programming sort of field so that they had understanding of how commenting and what types and variables were available in R, building on that using the IDE R Studio, then expanding that thinking about workflows and how that would be capable through data flows exploration wrangling visualization and outputs through to a complete review at the end now this took some time and we were able to roll this out as a face-to-face -face course so um we this was rolled out and then uh over so it was face-to-face -face, but it's over teams so people were able to come to the courses um, while they're still at home, where not everyone's in the office, but still being able to pick up these skills and, and implement them because we've got a lot of changes happening in the organization, particularly around COVID work, um, and people were able to start picking up skills in R so that they could contribute to those kind of projects. But we had to think about how we could take this further. Um, we had to think about the whole picture of requirements, and it doesn't stop at introductory training. Um, this is where the pathway becomes a bit more self-led and we're having standalone modules with specific topics that span skills and knowledge. So these are just a handful of the taken R further modules that we are planning to develop. And this is, so we can see here, we've got R and PHS. So my colleague Kira spoke about this earlier in the week. Um, we've got a training sort of set up for that already, but this is, so we've already got sort of issues around sort of being able to deliver the demand on introductory training. So having this as a more face-to-face -face training is going to be really difficult to manage in terms of efficiencies. So we developed or I found um, a couple of packages that were able to develop a training app. So it allows us to maintain that specific content. It's following our style guide and processes. Um, it's timely and self-paced because it's online. People can access it when they like uh, and includes text for learning graphics. So for different learning styles, people are able to, to pick up knowledge better through graphics. It's got interactive coding on the app and quizzes as well. So this was through two packages, Learn R and Grade This. Um, and this means that it's easier to be able to get that training out to people because it's accessible at any time people are able to start to expand on their learning through using a different training app 
for a particular course. So if we're looking at dates and times, we've got a particular training module for that, that someone could go get some information and um, get new skills and then embed that straight away. It's ready for them when they are ready for it. Um, so these training apps were sort of planned for the taking our further modules, but we already had a lot of content for the intro courses. So as a proof of concept, we developed the intro course as the training app so that we could see that it works, that we could start rolling it out. People could use it as a sort of an addition to the face-to-face -face course, or if people weren't able to, to get time on the face-to-face -face course, that they could go and do this for themselves, access the course, get all the materials, it includes all the same information, um, includes interactive code and quizzes that is really sort of there to test their knowledge um, and help embed that learning throughout the course. So I'm gonna show that sort of an interactive version, or sorry, I'm gonna show the actual app um, towards the end, but I thought it would be good to have a little look at how this is built and how easy it is to really get it off the ground. So the first page um, we have is just our markdown. So we've got the title, some text, and then we've got an image there for what the training pathway looks like. So that's all it is in terms of being able to use those packages, you're using some markdown and some code chunks, and you're able to output things that look like this. So I've added some CSS over the top that makes it a bit more branded. So it's people recognize that it's from PHS, that it's gonna be talking about our systems and our processes. So it's easier for people to, to connect to that and feel secure that the, that the knowledge that they're picking up is gonna match our style guides and processes more comfortably. Something a bit more exciting is maybe a quiz. How exciting. Um, so this is a little bit of the code that would require to build that. So it's just a case of stating it's a question, what the question is, and then the possible answers. Um, and we've got the answer there that that one's the correct answer. We can say if we're allowing retries or if it's just a one chance kind of thing. Um, and if the answers are in a particular order, then you would set that up here, or if it's just a random answer order. So. We've got this and that's what that outputs on the web app. So we can see that it's got a question there, it's got code highlighted and same for the questions. But something that you can do to take it a little bit further is add in a message that determines if someone picks an answer that isn't the right answer, you can give them specific feedback. So that's something that would be missing from some other online courses or sending someone a textbook or something like that, where they're not getting specific feedback. So if someone selects that, you can maybe see why they would select that, but you can give them feedback there on the spot that when they submit that answer, that that's not the right answer and this is why. So maybe this is what you could think about that you would get the right answer. You can click try again, and then hopefully you'll get the answer right after that. Following from that, we've got some interactive code chunks, which is incredible to be able to do in the browser that people can start writing the code and getting used to it. So this is just a basic hello world example. But we've got here that this is an exercise, so we can run the code and we can also submit an answer. So this one here has a task to change the output from hello world to hello your name. So they would be able to change that. Um, and again, we can add in some feedback for that. So this would be the grade this package that allows us to do this. And we can check. So it would only pass if it's hello and then something that's not hello world. And then we've got a fail if statement. So if it's still hello world, then we can give them specific feedback that says try changing it from that. So if someone's maybe not read the question properly, they might just click submit answer and they've not actually changed anything. So we can see that and then we can give them that feedback. Then we've also got a catch all statement at the end there. So maybe we've not got a specific bit of feedback, but if the answer still doesn't meet, meet that pass statement, then we can give them that information at the end that is just some generic feedback, but it's still something a bit more than that is wrong. So I've got some resources here. Um, this is the face-to-face -face training that we developed. And this, these two here are the actual app and the code for that, which is all available on GitHub. Now I'm gonna change what I'm sharing with you so I can actually show you the app running. If you just give me a wee second.
So hopefully that's changed over for you. And you can see here that this is available at this URL and it opens up this web app. So we've got some basic text, images. I've got a highlighted section here for how the actual course works. And that's something that we can share across multiple apps. So this is our intro app, but we've got apps coming out for more advanced material that we can sort of include this course information so it shows them how it works. Um, for instance, if someone uses the, if someone starts this training and then needs to leave and come back, the training will remember where they were in the training so they don't have to write down what chapter they were on or anything like that. This course pathway here is reflected in the chapters we've got down the side. And then we've got a quiz at the end here. This is sort of just introducing them that these kind of things will be dotted throughout the course. And I'm going to select the wrong answer. R is magic. Um, so R isn't magic. It might seem like it, but we've got that feedback there as to why that's been there. And then if we select everything else, because R can do so much, and we submit that, then we can see that we get the correct answer. And we can continue on to the next chapter. Um, again, some text and things like that. And this is where we get that in, in browser code chunk that we can run. We're going to get output. We can submit the answer, try changing from hello world. And then if I just change that and submit again, then we get some positive feedback there, nice and green that we've got the answer correct. Um, and again, we've got sort of chapters within chapters, so we can have sub chapters. So our foundations goes quite in deep. So we've got basic data types, type conversions, operators, and so on. And that goes throughout. And then we start introducing to packages. And we've got more sort of images here. And while we can load packages as part of the interactive code, you can also just have static code chunks that show what code and code outputs might look like. So you don't need to have them be interactive as well. You can also include videos, which I didn't mention before. This is something that we're planning on sorting for setting up a video um, for showing how our studio works and our, our server and what packages you can, or sorry, what um, versions of R we've got installed on that and how you can change between them. But just now we've got a template video from R studio that shows how R studio works. And you can play that in browser. You can add sort of a quiz after it to see if participants have sort of picked up the knowledge and things that they need. Um, and just right at the end here, I've got a little bit of information about how they can get help. But also, we've got embedded feedback. And we've used the Google Forms here, where it's embedded in the training so that when people reach the end, we're capturing all of those learners and we're getting feedback on the spot. So we're not having to find which people have done the course and then go and send them a separate email. It's straight there. And they can, feed that, uh, they can fill that form in, give us that feedback, and then submit in that form so that we can get that information and we can start to improve. Um, and because it is all hosted on GitHub, we can add issues and we can start sort of embedding changes straight away. We don't need to wait until set up a new course and then make sure that everyone's got the right course. And um, we're just pushing it and it's always going to be at the same link as well. Um, I started to develop more of these courses. So we've got a course for our PHS methods package. Um, and that looks very, very similar. We're using the C same CSS. Um, but it means that we can start taking that, taking it further by building those modules for taking our further. Um, and I've kept it all in the same repo so that all of the training is in the same place, even though that the links to the training will be separate, separated out. And that kind of wraps up the presentation. It's a very high level overview. I've tried to pack in some information there so that people can really understand what it is that I've been able to do in kind of a really short space of time. Um, getting that training that's got some really positive feedback from people um, already from what we've been able to do. Um, but there's obviously a lot more in-depth information that can be given. So I'm happy to, to take questions and sort of take it out of the session even so that um, people can start maybe using the packages for themselves or, or to see what we've been able to do. That's brilliant. Thank you, Russell. We've got quite a few questions coming in. Um, I want to I, I want to follow up with you personally because in <laughs> North England we're about to take on 40 apprentices. So okay. it looks like you've got some really good stuff set up that we can kind of link on to. Our most popular question is, is your training package available to the public? 
Yep, it's completely open. Um, so this um, GitHub repo, which has got all the code that I've used, is open, so you can access that. The slides, which should be shared with you all, um, have those links at the on the last slide, so you can access it, see it for yourself. Um, and any sort of ongoing coding, so for the PHS methods training, we're developing in the open, so hopefully, hopefully Ben will be happy with that. But um, everything's in the open, people can access it. Um, and the actual training app, if you want to check that out, um, that's at that link, which again, I've shared on the slides. So you should be able to just go there and you can check it out for yourselves. Brilliant. Um, our next question, which I think is really important, is what size of team do you have to support, deliver and maintain the materials? So my, the core team that I'm part of, which is sort of one that has set this all up, um, we're, we're a relatively small team, um, five of us just now. Um, but for the actual trainers that we've got, we've got, I think 10 to 12 um but we're just we're starting to take on a couple more to be able to deliver that face-to-face -face training but that's what these online apps or shiny apps are here to support as well so we can direct people here where if they're more comfortable using the online app or if they would just prefer to have something to sort of supplement the face-to-face the -face training as well so this doesn't take a lot of maintenance um, it's just about actually building the course content. And then once you've got the content, it's relatively simple to get into the app form. Thank you. Um, are trainees provided with sufficient guaranteed protected time to support and reinforce their pack their learning within work hours as part of the package? I, you can only answer that from your own experience in your own organisation. So that's kind of managed on a team by team basis, I would say. But I would say that most teams are very supportive of uh, of having that sort of protected time for for training. Um, obviously, that's my experience, but um, I think that 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 is there. And my team, because we are about transforming publications and taking those sort of efficiencies and that's like developing new things for the organisation and and taking that further. That is, um, we are very much about sort of helping those teams to be able to show where those improvements come from so that they can put that forward as this is a good reason why we should have this as protected time to be able to to learn R and to take that further and to be able to embed that in the team because we've got so much improvements that can be made for our processes but yeah from my experience it's not too bad um thank you so much we've got another couple of questions in there but i'm actually going to close it a minute early because um we've had some comments about nobody having a comfort break since we started at 9 15 this morning um and not wanting to miss any of the sessions so thank you so much russell that was of absolutely brilliant the buzz in the chat and the questions have been fab and i yes people are just coming in with thanks and applause so thank you so much <laughs> and i will see everybody at the next session Great. Thanks, everybody.